nuisance um, issue. What do you say to people who say that um, I don't want the feral cats back because they kill the birds at my bird feeder oh, yeah. Yeah. and they Kill dig my in birds. my garden, you okay. know, my flower beds? The birds are always going to be a problem. Yeah. People think that the cats kill all the birds. Well, you want to know what? The cats don't get half the birds. They're, they're very bad bird hunters. What they do hunt very well is your mice and your moles, really. Um, most of us caretakers who take care of feral cat kinds also feed the birds. I'm one of them. I don't have any problems. Um, when you sterilize the colony, when you have that person who's feeding, puts the shelters out, that's a managed colony. When that colony is managed like that, they have no reason to hunt the birds. And Isn't the it other thing to I mean, yeah, I tell people see, that. That's what I was just oh, going to say. Cats do. The other thing is, I mean, they're predators. That's what they do. <laughs> I mean, that's what they do. We can't stop that. That's been going on way before all of us were even here on this earth. You know, we can't stop that. Um, we can help try to make a difference by making sure that they have food provided on a regular basis so that we may take some of that away. They don't feel the need to hunt. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much typically once you sterilize that colony, that, uh, see, all of that just dies and goes away. Um, and then the flower beds and the gardens, I have this conversation at least two times a week in the summer, maybe even more. On our website, we have a sheet that tells you all the specific things that you can use to help keep the cats out of your garden, mm -hmm. you know, digging in the dirt, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And some of them work, some of them don't. Um, it depends on the cats, but it is something that you do need to talk about with people. You also, with that caretaker, if, if Jenny was feeding a colony of feral cats next to me and my aunt, all her cats are coming over dumping and peeing all over my yard, would I be upset? Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. So there's that conversation with that person is, hey, did you know that you can go get a kitty swimming pool, fill it up with some sand, some mulch, and the cats will use it as a litter box. You just got to make sure you scoop it at least once a month and probably change it, nah, maybe every month and a half, dump it and refill it. Will you make a big difference? Yeah, you will. It makes a big difference, just those little things. Okay. Some of the, a lot of the things that you use, you know, because people don't want to go out, they don't want to have to spend tons of money on those kinds of products. It's all over the counter stuff, but they have to reapply it if it rains. You know, so they can use the cayenne pepper, they can use the capsaicin um, oil, and the citronella. I tried the like orange peels and lemon peels. My cat, they are all laughing. It's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just didn't care. So it's uh, things that they have to try. Some things are going to work. I tell them this because I live in a very rural area to the point where the deer will come up on my deck to get to mm -hmm. my point. I always tell them just because the deer's standing on my deck doesn't mean I can pull out a gun and shoot it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, I was going to say, um, <laughs> I have a fight with someone here. Um, I have a few questions because I work for a police department. Yeah. So I'm the bad guy that always goes out <laughs> and. Um, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. So I'm the one that always has to go out, and just recently we had a you know incident where this wonderful woman was feeding this cat colony for probably four years. Okay. And then she kind of recruited help from one of her friends, I guess, you know, so-called friends. And they learned how to build these cat boxes and these cat houses. And and I don't know if Amber might have told you about this, I'm not sure, but... So the next thing we know is we get the property owner calling the police department and said, listen, these ladies are trespassing onto my property and they're setting up all this junk. So I go, all right. So me and an officer go out there and we look. Sure enough, there's 30... Looks like Rubbermaid containers. I have it on my website, so you can see it. <laughs> and and there, there's an incident in Stone Heights right now with the same thing. And that's, that's where I'm from. That's, that's, that's the program. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working with that one right now. Okay, so we have, and there's, and it's really hard for me because I, I, you know, obviously love the cats, and I feel bad for the woman who originally started it. But it puts us in a bad situation. I kind of, and I'm not, you know, even though I went to vet tech school and to go to pre vet now, it's, I love animals, but. I, for me, I, I kind of looked at the whole situation. I mean, we actually had to have evidence com tech come out there and take pictures that was so bad. Mm -hmm. So I, We've been working with her for a while trying to get her to downsize. I mean, you can't have 30 rubber 
containers lined up, yeah. and, you know, flapping tarps and everything else. It just causes problems. We say, you know, that there's a lot of information on the Alley Cat Allies website for a couple people asked for, um, you know, you can have door hangers that you can put on people's doors to talk to, talk to them about ferals, to tell them that, you know, euthanasia is not going to work. Also, you know, in the class that I teach, we go over, you know, how to be inconspicuous, how to have feeding stations that are away from where everyone's going to see them. Have your shelters where everyone is not going to see them. Out of sight, yeah. out of mind. Right. Right. And, well, and the less people you tell about it, once you have a colony maintained, <coughs> even if it's a bigger colony, like Catherine said, if you are, if the colony is totally maintained, they're all spayed and neutered, you have an adequate feeding station, you have adequate shelters away out of sight, people probably are not even going to know the cats are there. It's mm -hmm. people like this that are causing problems because, you know, if they make it such a big deal and talk to people. And actually, about it, in Sterling Heights, we have. We have a few issues, you know, so that's why I went to sit in your lecture today. We have a few issues because one of them, you know, is that issue over by the Kroger at Van Dyke and Riverland. Um, and that's why I brought that box in today because um, I love wildlife too. And so I had the Boy Scouts, they built these boxes. They will actually like, purchase in size, so you're more than welcome to look at it. But I just thought if it looked more natural, you know, and it blended in, I think it, you know, like you said, would be less, you know, conspicuous. And we would never have this issue. And that really bothers me because, I mean, this lady who owns the property, she could, even though we wouldn't appreciate it, she could say, I want all those cats gone. I want you to trap them. You put them there, trap them, get them out. I don't care what happens to them. Well, and plus you run into that. We're trying to tell people they're wild animals, and then you're providing all of this right. Rubbermaid stuff well, for them. We so. only have like 20 minutes left. So let yeah. me introduce myself real quick. I'm get a couple things in. My name is Kim, and I run Kitty Fixers. I have been doing ferals for about 10 years now. And barrels are totally my passion. Um, but what we have started to offer, I have paired up with um, Amber, who runs All About Animals Rescue, which is the first full-time spay to clinic in the state of Michigan. And I was doing just what Catherine is doing on a little smaller scale, but I'd get, you know, 20 emails a week, and I would go out and help one person, you know, and take four days out of my week to help that one person while working full-time. Well, we decided that it was better to educate people to do it on their own rather than help a few that I could help or the, you know, handful of feral cat people that were going out and helping individual people teach a class once a month. So once a month at All About Animals and Warren, we have a TNR program where we go over absolutely everything. We go over how to feed the cats, we go over how to set up a feeding pattern, we go over shelters. We have an extensive part of it, which is all about shelters, how to keep them, you know, conspicuous. We have, um, we are trying to steer away from the Rubbermaid tote shelters because they do cause a lot of, you know, People can see them. You know, we have these bright pink rubber made shelters that people are saying, what are those? Well, if you have a box like this, it's a lot easier to disguise. You know, if you can put straw around it or bushes around it or leaves around it, that's going to make it um, a lot less visible. But in the class, we teach absolutely everything. Um, how to keep the water from freezing, how to keep bugs out of the water, how to talk to your community about it, how to... Um, all About Animals owns, I think, about 350, about 350 live traps right now. Um, Amber has mm -hmm. purchased 350 live traps. They are free to anybody that wants to take them. They, we ask that you give us your credit card information so that if you don't return it, we can, you know, charge your credit card. This is the trap right here. We just wanted to see it. Um, we decided on this type of trap because it's very, very quiet. It's a very nice, very light, all weather, very quiet trap. We, we trap and will be 10 feet from another live trap, and this one will go off and the cats will keep eating because it's so quiet. So it's a very nice shelter. Um, we go over how to set up the feeding pattern to start trapping. We go over nest trapping. We go over how to bring them into the shelter. The shelter will take, the, the All About Animals Clinic will take them Monday through Thursday. You can take up to three a day with no appointment, which is really, really nice because, you know, you don't always know what you're going to get. If you do have, you know, 20 traps or 20 cats in your colony, we say borrow 30 traps because you always have more than you think. So we tell you to borrow more traps. We talk about making the appointments to bring them in. You can make appointments for more. And like we say, bring in three without an appointment. But if you do catch five, bring them in, you know. We say bring them in because then, you know, if we don't get to them that day, we'll get to them the next day. We go over recovering the class. Um, but recently what we have done, and that is on the All About Animals rescue.org website, also the kittyfixer.com website, which is my website. But recently what we started to do was to build, to um, teach shelter building workshops because we're in a big push to get all the cats spayed and neutered, but we obviously want to provide them with shelter. So we have monthly shelter building workshops. 
we started doing it monthly. Um, the next, we started doing it every month. We were, we were only getting like five, ten people. So we decided to do them, you know, a few times a year and have big, huge ones. So in June, we're going to have a really big one. Even if you guys don't have any feral cats that you need to take care of or that you're taking care of, please come out and help. You know, pass the word. If we get, you know, 100 people that come out, we can build, you know, 50 shelters and pass them out to people that need them. We want to have a stock of shelters at the clinic so when people call, we can say, come in and get one. You know, or have banks of shelters all around so people, if they need them, they can come and get them. So that's basically what I do. The, the TNR workshop once a month, so we teach everything, how to maintain the colony and how to TNR and also the shelter building for afterwards. Just quickly, where are you located? We are in Warren. In Warren. In Warren. Thank you. Okay, for the, Go ahead. <laughs> for the cages, is it just for your area, for your county, or is it for the county? No, anywhere. anywhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely anywhere. Oh, and once you take the class, you are certified as taking that class, and we will do all ferals at $25. Um, it's their spay and neuter, an ear tip, and a rabies, and they are all kept overnight. Do you guys talk at all about legislation? Because I live in a community where ordinances are like... We do a little bit, but we can have a whole other class for yeah. that. Okay. Um, we do recommend but that people check problem. out the Alley Cat Allies okay. website because they have a lot of very good information on that website. Okay. You know, people, and, and it's great that, you know, uh, that a community society is actually doing that, telling yeah. people they should take their ferals back. That's what all these shelters should be doing because then we wouldn't have the problem. Yeah. And the problem that we're running into also is there are you know, rescue groups out there that have great hearts and they're going out and taking litter after litter after litter of kittens and not doing anything mm -hmm. about spaying and neutering mm -hmm. the adults. Mm -hmm. They're treating the symptom rather than treating the problem. And we have to spay and neuter the adults it's so that they're not continuously reproducing. Uh, one thing too, um, I'm picking up six of those traps. You can get those <coughs> at cost wholesale from Amber. Yep. And all about animals. Those are those are ninety dollar traps. Normally they're fifty five. But since Amber since Amber orders so many at a time, she can get you a better deal if you do want to buy a trap. But like I said, you can borrow the traps. Um, we say thirty days, but if you actually need them longer than that, you're more than welcome to call us and say I want to keep them a little longer. So I mean, you, we have three hundred and fifty traps. You can borrow. You know, if you've got twenty cats, you can borrow thirty traps. If you've got transportation for them, um, you'll just have to give us a credit card and be responsible for them. Okay. Yeah, your class that you're going to have for the, build, the shelter building, that's with the rubber mate containers, though, right? Well, we are trying to do them. We're going to take a look at this one and try that's to... What, I was signed up for that one. Yeah, try to do some um, some with wood. But what, what I have been pushing for and what I have a, a lot of right now are styrofoam containers. I have a couple people that work at local hospitals, and they save them for me. And they're like three-inch styrofoam. They're three inches thick. It's the best insulation you can possibly get. It's wonderful insulation. They get their medical supplies in them that have to stay cold. Or also, if you could go to your local pet shops that carry fish and ask them if they'll save the styrofoam boxes that fish come in, those are great also. All of the styrofoam containers we line with mylar insulation so that the cats don't scratch the... Um, the styrofoam also it keeps them warmer. It reflects the body heat from the cats and actually keeps them warmer. Well, so I buy that in fifty foot rolls and I bring that to the class. So we can get it from you. We can get it from you. Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're planning on doing this one in June. There's flyers here and there's also flyers on the All About Animals table. So I mean, even if you can come and not bring any supplies at all, just come out and help and network. And there there is a list of supplies that we do need on here. So you can take a look at that. What we did in our community, not to keep, we just, we're just new at this and that's fine here, but we went to the high school shop class and we have them build our houses. Right, that's the a good idea. It, and we have yeah. a builder donate all the extra scraps and we have a roofing, uh, uh, animal, loves animals and we said we were doing this for the uh, feral community mm -hmm. and he donates all the shingles and we have the uh, builders get their scraps and we have high school shop classes building the houses. Well, this is Boy Scouts too, right? Wasn't Boy Scouts, Scouts yeah. Yeah. Boy Scouts. Yeah, I've had yeah. Boy Scouts help me in the past also. And we're looking into like covering, painting the white styrofoam, just put a coat of brown paint on it, outdoor brown paint so it'll be, you know, not as noticeable, yeah. not a bright white, white container. Or we're looking into, um, sometimes we cover them Instead of a blue tarp that's going to fly all over the place, we will actually attach like roofing paper, which is what goes underneath the sh shingles. Mm -hmm. We'll attach that to it, which makes it less obvious out mm -hmm. in the wild. We actually do give the rabies vaccine to all the feral cats, and if you're going to be doing this program, it should be part of the program. It has to be. You have a lot of people who are 
feral cats are going to get my kids rabies, they're going to bite, and it goes on and on and on, which has never been the case. Um, they will not attack you unless they actually are provoked or you have them backed into a corner somewhere. They're not going to bother you. They're going to run. But it is important that they do have their rabies vaccination because of the public. Um, so you want to make sure that that is part of your program. And yes, I am not disease control, and I go over this and over this with a lot of people. Um, I had to we had kind of an argument with our vet who does my sterilizations for the feral cats. I'm not about disease control. I will not have any of these cats tested for feline leukemia or FIV unless we have deemed them adoptable cats. If it is an adoptable cat and it is FIV positive and it is healthy, it's going back outside. That is how my program works. Um, if it has feline leukemia, depends on the situation. We have put a couple of those guys back out because they were actual colonies living at that person's residence. Um, but typically those guys we will humanely euthanize. Um, but I go over this with all kinds of people. You know, people, you know, they want them out of there, this, that, and the other thing. They want them all tested. If you want them tested, you're going to have to pay $35 for each cat. Exactly. <laughs> that usually takes care of it right there. And, you know, the disease is already there in the colony anyway. I'm not going to do anything by stopping what's going on there by just taking them all and euthanizing them. I want them to live their lives out there in the colony. Yes, does it actually work for a reduction in population? Yes, this there is one of my TNRs I did. I do very huge ones. Um, it's fun, I love it. <laughs> um, you, have they reported a significant reduction in population over time? Yes, we have. Um, the very, very first gal that we did was actually a friend of our executive director at the shelter. We weren't really sure what all we were doing, so we wanted somebody who wouldn't get upset with us if we screwed things up. Um, there's no cats there anymore. They're gone. That was 40, almost four years ago. Um, and I take care of a colony in Ipsy. I started with 11. I have five. Um, I'm where I'm situated, I'm always going to have some newcomers. I had a couple kittens last year. But we got those out of there, and they went up for adoption at the shelter. Um, the, the removal, it doesn't work, guys. It never has. You know, <laughs> I don't know where people thought that it always worked. It doesn't work. You miss cats. The other group's right down the road. Hi, there's nobody living there anymore, and somebody's throwing food outside. Looks like a great place to live, and here we go. Those guys move in, they start the reproduction issues all over again. You know, and they will breed to full capacity. They'll keep going and going. Some people are just amazed. You know, we've had a few people that I've never heard from. They are actually barn people. Um, and I've never had a problem all these years, and last year, 44 cats, just like that. <laughs> and then they're calling us, help! I'm like, yeah, we'll take care of you. So yeah, it's, it happens very quickly. Yes, and adoption options. Uh, it's very hard. Do I try and socialize them? Do I put them back? What's best for the cat? That's what has to be remembered. What's best for that individual? Is it better for me to stick it in somebody's house where it really doesn't want to be? Or is it better for me to sterilize it and put it back? And your other biggest problem, do you have that individual who knows how to socialize a feral kitten? Most people don't. We, um, we've had a few classes, um, and then people will take them home and try them, and um, you'll never see them again for the feral kittens. It's very hard. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time involved in socializing these guys. The younger guys, like five, six weeks old, those guys are easy. They're like little hissy spitties, you know? <laughs> you can always pretty much turn those around. But when you start getting into the older guys, it becomes more and more difficult. And then I've always run into the problem, I can't find anybody who actually knows what to do and how to take care of them. And then what happens is that foster becomes attached to that cat. They don't want to tell me in 10 days, oh, Catherine, it needs to go back outside. A lot of them won't do that. They're, they feel sorry for it, so they end up keeping it. Well, guess what? It only likes them. That's it. It doesn't like anybody else, just that particular person. 
So we started just doing the younger guys. If I come across a colony that has five to seven week old kittens, maybe some eight week old kittens, it depends on their attitude, how they're acting, and how they're reacting to the shelter environment. Anything above that, I'm sterilizing, they go back. If that caretaker can work with those kittens and find them a home, please do. You know, go right ahead, at least it's sterilized, and that's gonna even help you too. And one more really important thing about this program, you have to remember, you have to work with everybody. I don't care who you are. I will sterilize anybody's cat for them. I don't care. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you don't have money. I don't care if you can't pay me for a year. If you want to give me a bag of dry cat food, great, please. I'm going to help you. It's important that we help and work with everybody. I also work with two uh, rescues. I work with Possibilities on Oakland County, and I also work with Friends of Michigan Animal Rescue. Um, Possibilities, I was a little unsure of, <laughs> didn't know them, and so what I did, and I find this is how you have to do this, if you're really unsure of the group, you need to go and do a tracking with them, and that's exactly what I did. And they actually appreciated that I did that. I wanted to see what they did, how they worked, how they talk to people, you know what, they're fabulous. They agree with everything both groups do. They use our shelter to get all the cats sterilized. They give um, a donation after a certain amount of cats, and of course their cost is real low. Um, and they will also refer people to me who have inside cats that need to be sterilized. I'm gonna help them. You know, we ask for a $25 for each cat or a donation towards the program or if you're having financial difficulties, we're still gonna help you we want your cats sterilized. I'm tired of all of the cats that come into the shelter year after year after year. So I'm gonna help anybody that I possibly can. Community support, well, <laughs> it's hard, it really is. It takes some work. Um, it takes a lot of talking and educating, like I told you earlier. Um, you're going to run into people who are you're just not going to get anywhere with, so just you need to learn to listen, listen to their beefs, and then just kind of let it go. You can say what you need to say. One thing you cannot do with this program is get in somebody else's face when they're getting in yours and get angry right back. Because once you do that, you've lost what you're trying to work towards. And you definitely cannot handle this program that way. Um, I need the, com the community support. Washtenaw County is huge. We estimate there's like 60,000 feral cats in Washtenaw County. And I cover Plymouth, Plymouth Township, Canton and Canton Township. And because Michigan Humane does not want to do this program, I have people all over the place calling about this program. Livingston County, they're not doing it either. They, they refer them to me. So I need the community support because I deal with a very particular large area and I know they need the community support too. And it's hard sometimes. You know, it's really hard to stress what you're trying to do, but you can't ever let yourself get angry, and you can't ever stand there and have the attitude that it's all about the cats. It's not. It's all about making the situation better for everybody, okay? What else you got, Jenny? We got one last one. <laughs> <laughs> for the love of cats. And that's why I'm doing this. My passion is to help these guys. I, I've always been a cat person, and I worked in taking a hang of dogs too, but I've been doing this for a while now, um, and I, it's important to me that I help get these cats sterilized. I, I'm, I'm tired of us euthanizing them. There's no good reason for that. And when I know that I can help somebody, if you show up and say, what do I do? I'm gonna help you. I don't care, I don't care about your neighbors. I'll deal with your neighbors, you know, and then, I, I had this, the very first trapping I did, this lady was feeding like 40 cats. She was on a lake, and the dude next door was trying to sell his house. <laughs> <laughs> so, this gentleman, I, he called me a tree hugger, he was swearing at yeah. me, <laughs> all, all kinds of things. And you know, I just had to stand there and take all of that. You know, and he, he it, it made him angry. <laughs> well, you're not saying anything back, and I'm like, sir, all I can do is help. Get these cats sterilized, get them put back. I can give you information on how to keep them off of your property. Well, I can't sell my damn house with these cats. 
So what happened for the end result was we got all of her cats trapped. We got them all sterilized. I brought them back. He wasn't home that day. I brought all, all those cats back. I saw him the next day because he had to go by and pick up some stuff. Um, and she found a kitten. I think that was the other reason why I went back. I went back and he stopped and he said, I thought you said you were going to bring all those cats back. <laughs> I did. What? Yes, he had not seen any of them. And to this day, I don't think he sees any of them. I mean, she was feeding them on her front porch, you know, so it was a little close over there. It was an older couple with some health issues. But they also owned property right across the road with a big barn and then the woods backed up there. I was like, well, we're going to move everybody across the road. And that's what we did. He has no idea. He never sees scans. So those, those are all really important things. Question. Yeah. Um, the first time we got a call from the rescue, it was from a neighborhood where the people had been feeding two cats that turned, you know, was one cat in the beginning, <laughs> then it had a litter, and one survived over the winter, and we're up by Mackinac City, so it was oh, Okay. Anyway, so then they called us because they said, we think the, the, the daughter cat is pregnant, and the lady feeds them as a and all this stuff. So we went over there first. The crazy cat lady looking there uh, on a lake, looking under everybody's deck and everything. <laughs> well, the daughter cat, we couldn't like stop catching her, and we were worried because when we first caught her, I mean, she went in the live trap instantly, mm -hmm. and so we took her into the vet, and he said she's only like nine months old, but she's just cat litter of kittens. Yeah. They're out there somewhere, and it's really recent. And we were, it was so hard to decide: do we put her back? Or do we keep her? What you know? What do we do? Because she was like, "Hey, I mean, we couldn't get her out of the trap." It was like, "No, I want to stay with you guys," <laughs> and we were like trying to determine. So we, and most of the neighbors agreed with us, except the, this one man who was like, "Get him out of here." Was that we wanted to put her back so that hopefully she would bring us the kittens that sooner or later they'd be visible. Believe it or not, we caught her three times in. <laughs> <laughs> we kept going, go, go. And what happened was finally when we took her back to the vet and he said it was time that he thought we could sterilize, you know, sterilize her for the I kept her in this three story little crate I have in my garage and I kept her overnight, a couple days. We put her back, we took that to the people's house mm -hmm. and around Three days later, these ladies called us up and they go, oh, Dick's so mad, we moved the cage like right outside his living room door. <laughs> but you know what? She brought the kittens and brought them into that crate. And that's how we caught them. And what was so funny is that there was one we didn't realize and two days later, Dick's wife called and said, those cats were living under our deck. And he was the only person who wouldn't let us look under his deck. And that's where we found out they were living. But now, those people, I mean, they don't, I mean, they're just like so thankful because we caught and then the mother got, I mean, it was a long process over the summer, but mm -hmm. we figured we saved eight cats and it worked and that just changed that whole community. Yes. But then they put up, the, the neighbors put up a sign saying, is this your male cat? You know, and they just put a number. And this man called, he goes, yes, that's my cat. And they go, well, he like lives at our house and he's, you know, impregnating all these cats. So we called him and said, we'll neuter him for free. No, I don't think so. Yeah. We're like, for free, <laughs> for free. And I finally I told the, the ladies who were feeding them, I said, you know what? He's in your house. You have pictures of him actually in your house. Bring you don't know who his cat is. is. I said, but I didn't tell you that. But you know, you know if, I, if I'm trapping somewhere, and, and typically when you're doing this, especially in the neighborhood, you should post to people's doors to let you know that you're there. And you know, that's how we do the trailer parks, the apartment buildings, things like that. We post a couple weeks before we go. Do you want to know what? If your cat doesn't have any identification on, mm -hmm. if you know his ears are already tipped or whatever, he's not neutered and that cat's coming here to eat at that person's house and I'm there trapping, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, and that's what a cat was. If you have followed through all of that process and you have posted, you have done all of that, there's not a whole lot they can do. Yeah, you can't right. evaluate a cat overnight. Right. If you catch a yeah. cat at midnight, you're taking it in the next morning at 7 a.m. to be spayed or neutered. You can't evaluate it. And those yeah. cats so can't be running that large. Yeah, that's what yeah. we say. Well, that's what we said. He goes, well, he takes off for days. We're like, yeah, because he's down the street where the ladies are seeing the female. But they are, you know, it's really sort of changed things. But another thing is we have a little tiny town where 
just seven years ago, some, uh, one of the neighbors helped this little old lady capture her, and she redid her one garage so the cats could go in at night and they had heat and everything, and she is down to one cat yes, in yes, seven okay. years. I mean, and she had like the whole neighborhood, and she's down to one cat. Do you have any hints on, I, I have a colony that I care for, and all of my colony is all fixed. Every once in a while, I get another stray coming in that's not. Now, how do I trap the one when I've got, you know, 20 others out there that are, are already, you know, how do I get the one guy? Keep trapping. <laughs> you hope that the ones that are a little bit neutered are a little bit trap-wise, which hope, and are a little more it's leery. Been, it's been and five years since just, they were trapped. But it's just a matter of you sitting out there and letting the ones that are there to go. Are you, are you familiar with the box trap? Yeah, yeah I've been on Alley Cat. I was it's to all not like, I feel that when you're doing this program, it's always a good idea to have a box trap. And the reason for that is, I don't care. You, you, the colony that you're trying to sterilize is going to be one, just one cat, one or two cats in that colony that are trap smart for whatever reason. They're just not going to go into that trap. And the box trap is wonderful. I, it, it amazes me. Those cats that won't have anything to do with the live trap, they don't want to be there. And it's like, sweet! You know, you pull it and you transfer them into the live trap. It's worth the time if you don't have to build it or have somebody make one for or you. Like we have several available. I'm way up almost to <laughs> Genesee <laughs> County. So yeah, can you come down to Warren? Yeah, put the word out. That's true. Put the word out.